I hate Snooky. No offense, Snooky, but I hate you. So yeah, Aragon, not a favorite series of mine. I haven't even really gotten started talking about all the problems there are with that series. Oh, there is one more we gotta talk about, though. And then we're done, I'll move on to Harry Potter and say nice things again. And that is the bullcrap end of the final book. Now, if you haven't read the final book and you like the series, first off, why haven't you read it, read it yet? Second of all, spoiler alert, I'm going to be talking about some things. Let's, let, let's start with the fact that the final battle was a complete letdown in every sense of the word. They basically won through the power of friendship and then just guilted him to death. Really? I, I was expecting a giant epic... These look like weird eggs. Giant epic showdown between, like, dragons and demons and stuff. It, it was, like, gonna be the most epic thing ever, and evil death monsters were gonna pour out of the woodwork. We were going to see things we'd never even dreamed of before. But no, it was just... him... Why is my magic... There it is. Him knowing some... completely stupid... Uh, Okay, I have contained myself. That whole bit with the magic word that controls all magic... Hmm? Okay, you made a loud noise, sir. That was just dumb. First off, how does that even work? It removes all magical power, except the person saying it. Like, how does that work from their perspective? In that universe, it, it basically makes whatever you say true. So basically what you had to say is that magic does not work. Now first off, the amount of strain that it would take to remove the magical power of everyone in that universe all at once, except you, should have killed him even if he had the backing of 10 billion souls of dragons. Second of all, why does that work? Like, why is that a thing? It's just one word, yet it somehow conveys the concept of, I want everyone to not have power except me. Because, you know, he wasn't, you know, hyped up to be the most powerful character in the series, just so that he can use some random thing that was pulled out of the author author's butt in the final edit to beat them. What the? What the? Uh, oh, God! Oh, God! Okay, well, I can take that loss. I didn't see that guy. I mean, the, the giant freaking dragon, him being an epic evil overlord of doom who controlled shades and monsters beyond imagining, and then just, I know this one secret word, suck it. And you're like, really? Like, that's your secret knowledge? Not a whole host of magical abilities that can just break things of them? No, you somehow just kind of have the power necessary to remove magic from the planet. First of all, I'm not sure I believe you. Second of all, that's stupid. Oh, God. Oh, I didn't heal, did I? Alright, let's crawl up here and heal then. Does a mud crab... Ooh. Does a mud crab count as an enemy? No. Good. I, w I was hoping they would count as neutral. Oh, hello again. Anyway, that just... Moving on past Aragon and Twilight, because neither series is very good. It's pulp. That's all there is to it. It's, it's cheap thrills for the masses. There's not anything wrong with that necessarily, but it's not a deep book. Anyone who pretends it is is not an, a very avid reader of many books. Who's... what enemy is it? Oh, okay, you've, you've aggroed on me. You're a thing. Come here. Okay, now you can hit me. The final series is Harry Potter. Harry Potter is the world phenomenon. It is the most popular series in our lifetime so far. I apparently can't hit this guy here. Am I really going to die to this guy because my fire spells weren't hitting? Screw this. Really? There we go. <sighs> it's a series that takes a lot of stuff from Lord of the Rings, just like all three of the other series I was just talking about. The difference is that it does it in a pretty effective way, with most of it being 
ripped off in, in a kind of a roundabout way, like Sauron having similar ways of staying alive as... I mean, Voldemort having similar ways of not dying as um, Sauron did, and a lot of similarities like that. But at the same time, it didn't overburden itself with being similar to Lord of the Rings like Aragorn did. It instead went for a, I'm going to be myself, just happened to take some of the cooler ideas. Oh, okay. Now you're all aggro -y and stuff. And for that reason, I think Harry Potter automatically starts doing better than the other two. Because it doesn't try and follow directly in the footsteps of anyone. It kind of goes its own path. While still kind of go... It, it follows the same general path as those old stories. Without trying to be them. Which is definitely an improvement. Oh god, I hate Slotfish so much right now. The only real downside to the Harry Potter series is pretty much any book after the fifth one. I mean, the fifth one had its problems. It was way too emo through pretty much the entire thing. And I know that people will say, Well, that was supposed to be his coming-of-age book, in which he began to face real-world problems. Yeah, that's true. But the whole f book still felt like it was just full of darkness. F what? 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 Okay. Like, it was just full of darkness and despair for the simple s sake of having darkness and despair. Also, they killed Sirius way too early. Like, he barely had time to get attached to the character in the books, and suddenly he's dead as a doorknob. Okay, you know what? I'm gonna die. I might die here. I, could die. I don't know who I'm targeting. I think that one's almost dead, though. I think I got one of them. Oh, hello. Great, more of them. I'm gonna die! Suddenly my breath meter appears after all that time of me looking for it. Good god, I keep getting gangbang this episode. I really hate water in this game. I need to get the water walking spell. So now, what's wrong with the last couple books of Harry Potter? Well, first off, the sixth book spent the entire time portraying Snape as this tragic hero. After spending the entire rest of the series developing as him as a character we're supposed to hate. The massive shift did absolutely nothing for his character except make me go, that just doesn't feel right. And then the seventh book, which just kind of tried to mess everything up, it feels like. The seventh book, it introduced the Deathly Hallows, which was a mistake. The whole thing with the Elder Wand, first off, let's start there, makes it seem like everything Dumbledore did was because he had a powerful wand to help him do it. It really, it, it really lowers my opinion of Dumbledore, knowing that he had this supposedly unbeatable wand. But that's beside the point, he's still kind of awesome. The ring was just kind of bullcrap randomly pulled out of nowhere that conveniently didn't really have any particular point in the story before that. So, it could be passed off as being part of the story from the beginning. The Invisibility Cloak, though, I call massive amounts of bullcrap on that. There, that, that thing is not what it, they said it was in the Deathly Hallows. I can name at least one time where someone managed to curse him under that. Not to mention the fact that people have noticed him under it. It's even been implied before that uh, the cat could see him, well not see him, but would know he was there. The fact that Moody's magical eye could see through it kind of indicates that it's not a gift of magic created by Death himself. You think Death himself would be able to bypass apparently pretty standard mystical eyes created by the average wizard. Okay, I'm not finding any ways up here. Oh, maybe here. 
And then there's the fact that in the f sixth book, I want to say? I think it's the sixth book. It might be the fifth one. I'm pretty sure it's the sixth. Where uh, Harry uses the cloak on the Hogwarts train to... Um, Hogwarts Express, sorry. To spy on Malfoy and his cohorts. Malfoy notices him in the cloak and stuns him while under it. Now, the, now he did notice him before he went invisible, that is true. But the fact is that he managed to stun him when one of the things they talked about with the cloak was spells not working on people who are wearing the cloak. Just saying. So that's at least those examples. I mean, Dumbledore even knew that Harry was using the cloak uh, when he went to the Mirror of Edersid, I think it's pronounced. Whoa. I think I've been recording for too long. It's spazzing out. But Dumbledore knew he was there when he went to the Mirror of Erised without there being any particular explanation for why. And again, if the cloak is supposed to be this completely unstoppable force of invisibility, how many up there are you? Uh, it would definitely work, even on Dumbledore. But the fact that it doesn't, and Dumbledore is just kind of like, lol, hi, makes me kind of think, yeah. There's a lot of good um, foreshadowing in Harry Potter. Deathly Hallows is one of the examples of not good foreshadowing. As much as I enjoyed that book, it, it was a disappointment. The entire book felt so mediocre compared to a lot of the other books in the Harry Potter series that I just, I don't know, I couldn't really get into it. as much, anyway. I definitely prefer it over the sixth book, which is by far my least favorite book, because of that whole thing with Snape being incredibly stupid. But the, um... I'm gonna save this real fast, because I've been having so much trouble here. But the, the main reason why the final book falls so short of my expectations is because pretty much everyone dies in it, and it's just ridiculous. I mean, there are maybe two deaths in that story that could have been pulled off with any amount of emotion, effectively. Um, that uh, one of them definitely being um, the death of Dobby, which I will admit I cried at that part. That part was emotional. That part was basic. Like that book can be compared to a tickle fight, and then that scene was a massive punch in the face. Not even in the face, in the throat. It left you, like, sitting there, clutching your throat, gasping for air, but somehow realizing, wow, this is what I came here this whole time for, to get the crap kicked out of me by a good story. It's a weird analogy, but I'm going to roll with it. The final battle was kind of meh. I do like, I did like the scene where Harry was dead and was just, like, chatting with Dumbledore in this realm beyond life. I do feel like that scene was played pretty effectively. It opened up some decent philosophical questions and that sort of thing. It didn't it didn't come off as being too preachy either. That's a big point in its favor. Yep, here he comes. Overall, my favorite Harry Potter book is still the first one cuz that was just like a series of slaps to the face. The second book was a little bit more laid back with just the occasional slight tap on the face followed by an immense slap every couple of minutes. The third one, the reason why I don't like the third one a whole lot is because it hinges almost entirely on the end of the book, where there's this big shock that the main villain actually isn't a villain at all. And as great as that is, it was a fantastic plot device, very well pulled off. Uh, after the first time you read it, you know what's coming, so that book just doesn't have as much, for lack of a better term, replay value as the other ones. The fourth book was decent, but had too much random crap. The entire Triwizard Tournament essentially existed simply so that we could have that end scene where Voldemort comes back. There really was no other outcome to it. I mean, there were a few semi-important character development scenes, 
But other than that, and building up for uh, Diggory's death, there was no real point to it, which is kind of disappointing considering the amount of foreshadowing uh, J.K. Rowling manages to work into her books. She's very good at that. Um, fifth book, like I said, there was way too much of the dark, depressing nonsense that was completely unnecessary in it. But otherwise, it was a fine book. I enjoyed it. I've read that one slightly less than most of the original ones, but still more than the sixth. The sixth one basically portrayed Harry Potter suddenly as an infantile idiot. Hermione as this random jealous wench, essentially. Uh, that's I, th I honestly blame the sixth book for kind of establishing Ron as being a complete idiot, even though it's been implied that he's the tactical genius of the group. Not to mention the one who's cool under fire. I'm, I'll talk about something like that here in a second. But when it comes down to it, the sixth book was a lot of characters being completely altered from what we already had them established as being and ruining a lot of stuff that had been built up. Uh, generally, it was just a poorly, 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 poorly executed book. There was one good scene, and everyone knows what I'm talking about, and that was the entire last couple of chapters in the death of Dumbledore. The death of Dumbledore, something we kind of saw coming, I suppose. Anyone with a brain kind of thought, well, Dumbledore will probably die in this book was kind of hinted at throughout, like him getting older and all that. But at the same time, there was a part of you that was saying, No, not Dumbledore! Uh, that book... It was a good book at, like, the very end. But oh well. Hmm? Enemies nearby? Where? Is... This guy? I guess so. So yeah, that's it. The seventh one tried to answer too many questions that honestly we didn't need answers to, and then also proceeded to be dumb and add in a bunch of stuff that was completely unnecessary. Overall though, I like the Harry Potter series. The movies are okay, but that's what I was about to talk about. In the movies, one of my least favorite things about them is their portrayal of Ron Weasley. In the books, Ron Weasley is the tactical genius of the group who is known for staying cool under pressure and supporting his friends no matter what. Other than a brief little thing in the, the fourth book, he never really had any moments where he would abandon his friends. Yes, there was that scene in the seventh book, but at the same time, that one also came off as feeling kind of dumb and out of place considering the amount of character development in the fourth one should have eradicated the need for that particular segment. But in the movies, he was portrayed as essentially a babbling idiot who... Oh, I'm leveled up again. Cool, this will be the grind and talk episode. Well, multiple episodes. I think I have like three episodes. But yeah, I mean... Come right down to it. Ron Weasley was like the stand-up guy. He was the cool guy. He was kind of the funny guy, yeah. But he was also... He was smart in his own ways. Tactically speaking, he was smart. He was good in a fight, and he was even good out of a fight. But in the movies, especially in the first one, that was completely removed from his character. And the scene I'm particularly talking about is the scene with the Devil's Snare, when they're uh, going to try and get the... well, stop Voldemort from getting the Sorcerer's Stone. Now, in the books, Hermione was the one who was freaking out about that. She managed to get out of the Devil's Snare, Ron and Harry did not, and she was standing nearby freaking out and going, Oh God, what am I going to do? There was even a scene where they told her to light a fire, well not a scene, but in that scene, they told her, light a fire, Dev Devil Snare's afraid of fire. So she's like, oh, but where am I going to get wood? And then <laughs> and Ron just has this hilarious moment where he's like, are you a witch or not? And then she's like, oh, that's right, and then conjures fire and everyone's happy. In the movie, that was changed to her being all, like, calm and peaceful and being just like, just remain calm and it will absorb you slower and whatnot. And Ron's, like, freaking out and it just ruined that whole bit. The reason I'm upset about this is not some sort of sexist thing of women need to freak out in terrible circumstances. Anyone who knows the huge... Am I stuck? 
the huge crush I have on Sigourney Weaver knows that that is a load of bull. Because Sigourney Weaver, especially when she's Ripley, is ZOMG take control woman, and I like it. Uh, but yeah. Eh, I am free. Okay. This is cool. This game is pretty awesome, not gonna lie. I'm enjoying exploring this. I'm sorry if you guys aren't enjoying this as much as I am, but getting back to the scene. Uh, yeah, now the reason why I don't agree with this scene is because the fact that Hermione grew up kind of sheltered. It, it was especially stressed in the first book and the second book, where she was portrayed as being very nerdy, very much follow the rules, double D from Ed Ed Nettie style character. And she grew out of that. In the third book, she's got that scene where she punches Malfoy. Huge character development moment there. It, it's very important to her entire being. And honestly, that was destroyed in the movies. Because she was portrayed as being... Like, after the first one, and the first one was by far the best movie when it comes to being accurate with the books. You can argue past there whether the other ones are better or not. But that one was definitely the most accurate in terms of book-to-movie adaptations. And she, from the second movie onward, especially in the third one, she was portrayed as being already kind of a dominant female character who's like, I'm not afraid of anything. I don't need no man to take care of me. And yeah, that's how her character ended up being. That's the whole point of it. But it happened way too fast. It was pretty much established in the first one, despite the accuracy. And then was pretty much, and then after that was like hard on massive amount of cement poured over top of it in the um oh spazzing out in the second movie so yeah that's that might just be my opinion but I really feel like a lot of the scenes that were in um the first and second movies really took away from Hermione as being a somewhat vulnerable character initially that eventually became a tough character. It was part of her growth as both a woman and as a fictional character. And honestly, I really enjoyed that. It was fun to... I mean, it's always fun to see a character grow up throughout a series. I mean, Harry, he's gone through so many changes. Ron's gone through massive changes. And Hermione's changes kind of got shot in the face. I almost feel like there were good intentions behind that too. Like, oh well... Let's not make her this, you know, princess who needs to be saved from the Tower by the Brave Knight character. But at the same time, she was never that. She was just a bit flighty in the beginning. Which was inevitably destroyed in the movies. Okay. Okay, there we go. I don't know what was nearby, but it was not wanting me to sleep. Oh, well. Oh, cool. Um, I'm going to go with personality, luck, and luck, and intelligence. Okay. Now, what's another thing I didn't like about the movies? I feel like there was something else I was about to talk about. I guess that pretty... I say your needs. Um... Nothing. Pretty well set. I guess that co that pretty much covers my opinion of those three books. There's a lot more, and there's a ton of stuff I could go on about with why I like or don't like each series. Especially what I don't like about Twilight and Aragon. But I'm going to stop talking about it now. I'm quite sure that if anyone watches this who likes any of those series, they're going to be very upset in some way, shape, or form about something that I said. Keep in mind, it's just my opinion. I'm not trying to say I'm necessarily completely correct about it. But I, f I feel pretty confident in the fact that I am right about a lot of that stuff. If not all of it. Anyway, I'm going to leave off here because... At this point... I've been recording for like an hour, I actually I think it's been more than an hour. My computer is slowly starting to overheat, and I've talked about pretty much everything I want to talk about for now. Next time, I might start doing that more, where I just kind of talk during more wind about books and stuff, because I've been, like, like I said, I've been writing and reading a lot, so 
it's a current interest and in, I don't know just let me guys let me guys it's late and I'm tired let me know if you guys want me to talk about anything specific feel free to ask my opinions on pretty much anything I probably won't talk about politics religion or the great pumpkin because those are incredibly controversial subjects and should be taken very seriously and therefore not discussed on YouTube other than that though feel free to ask me anything no, I won't go out on a date with you. This has been Zach of the Nom Nom Bros, playing Morrowind and discussing the literary aspects of three of the most popular series out there today. Join us next time for a discussion on what will probably end up being Lord of the Rings in some way, shape, or form. Goodbye.